Welcome to Manchester Seventh-day Adventist Church. We hope you'll be inspired and challenged as you join us on the Lord's Seventh-day Sabbath to worship and open God's Word. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to Before we begin this morning, I'd like to just bow our heads for a word of prayer again. Precious Father in heaven, we come to you this morning because it's such a pleasure to spend some time with you. And Lord, I pray that as we spend time with you today, that we would become closer to you. And the songs that we sang this morning, we would have more faith in you because of the time that we have spent with you. But more than anything else, Lord, we want to bring you pleasure today. We want to praise you. We want to lift you up. And we want to thank you for what you do for us. We want to thank you, Lord, for the talents that you've given us to play instruments and the talents you've given us to sing. And we just want to be able to use those talents this morning to let you know we love you, Jesus. And we want to learn to love like you love. Because we know that only when we learn to love like you love will we be prepared to spend eternity with you and will we be prepared to lead others to you. Thank you, Jesus. Now be with us. Enjoy our service with us. We pray in your holy and precious name. Amen. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know the same. Just to trust his cleansing. 
just for Jesus, simply taking life and rest and joy and peace. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. I'm so in the world, people tend to think that the kings and the powerful are the greatest, and they think that they have, um, well, they may have power on this earth, but we all kind of look up to them. But, you know, Jesus says that the greatest are those that are a servant. And we at Highland believe very much in service. And so I brought some pictures to show to you today, and I brought a couple of young ladies who are going to share a little bit of information about a service project that we, that some of the students, the freshmen and sophomores, did this fall. I don't know if you were watching the news earlier this fall, but a hurricane went through Houston, Texas. Did you see that? Did you look at the results of that? Do you know what a hurricane is? You don't get hurricanes here in Kentucky. What's a hurricane? Anybody know? Anybody want to volunteer? It's a really big storm. Okay. It's a really big storm with a lot of a lot of wind. We lived in Houston for a year and we got to be part of Rita, so we can tell you it was a lot of wind. And the wind pushes the ocean water up and the biggest problem is flooding. Well, the students were asked by a group called ACTS to come down as a first response school and help out within just days of the hurricane, help the flooded people. Now, their floods, ladies, help me out here. How high was the water in the houses that you were working in? You could still see the line. The water had gone back out to the ocean, but how high had the water gotten in the houses? Well, about really this high, maybe. Yeah. And how much was salvageable out of the houses? How much could be saved from the houses? Not very much at all. Okay, so everything that was below this mark on the wall, and then uh, even above that, what was it like? Pretty, um, well, everything was kind of torn apart and all moldy, and so there wasn't much oh, that was left that was okay. So. Okay, now if we could start, I'm going to show a couple of slides. I'm going to ask these girls a few more questions. This was um, a shed out back that we were helping to clear out. Basically, what, did this, what jobs did Axe give the students to do? Haley or, let me introduce Haley and Katie, who are here helping me. What kinds of jobs did they give the students to do? Um, well, you could either help in the kitchen and feed all those that came for food, which in one day we fed about 1,500 people. Or you could go um, to some of the people's houses and help them clear all the gross stuff out and um, help them move what was left that they could actually save. Or you could also be in the water line, which is where they had giant stacks of water and ice and MREs to anybody who drove by, you could give them a pack of that. Good. And what did you find... As they go in here, they are pulling some more things out. You're going to see them in just a minute carrying TV sets, pianos, dressers, couches. And they stack them by the road in huge mountains. Eli found a kitten. Eli's up here somewhere. And all the debris. Um, they stacked them in huge mountains by the roadside. And then what was going to happen to it all? MREs are meals ready to eat. It, 
it comes like in a little sealed packet and then you open it and put water in it and it automatically, the water starts getting boiling hot. Then you just put the packet of food in it and it automatically heats it up. Now, in the, the students, when they got down there, were housed in a gymnasium in a school on hardwood floor in the gymnasium and they set up emergency uh, tents basically all outside the gymnasium because the people had no water, no electricity, they had nothing, no place. They were living in shelters and trying to get their homes back in order. You can just keep flipping through those as fast as they'll flip, just showing the students at work there. Talk to me a little bit about the response of the people. They have lost everything. Talk to me a little bit about how they responded to you. Well, um, they, of course, you know, they were pretty um, upset about what had happened, but I was, I was actually pretty surprised and very thankful that um, they, they were actually very happy um, that there were a lot of us, you know, actually trying to help them because um, a lot of them had lost everything that they had and, um, well, it was, it was really great, you know, um, how we got to help them, like, and feed them and give them, like, certain things that they would end up needing. And, um, well, I, I was just, I thought it was a real blessing to, you know, actually see them smile and say, oh, thank you, you know, you, you guys are such a blessing to us. And I, I was really happy about that. <laughs> How long did you stay down there? We were there for about a week. About a week. And during that week's time, Jeff, maybe you know the figures right off. How many meals? Jeff was one of them. Our bus driver, Jeff Massey, is the one who took them down there. How many meals? Was it 30,000 meals served in that time? And it was 26,000, 27,000, yeah. Wow. A lot of meals. And they would bring uh, box trucks in with this. 1,500 meals at a, at a lick, and we'd just go to unload and hand them out. And uh, people were just coming in from everywhere. Mm -hmm. Truckloads of ice, truckloads of water. Just pallets and pallets and pallets of go, go even a little bit quicker, because at the end I wanted to show the final result, which was the mountains of debris that the kids had carried out to the roadside. I just, did we get an answer what happens to all of that debris at, afterward? Uh, it mainly goes to insurance. If they have insurance, uh, they usually put a sign saying, do there not take. There we go. I'm sorry, Katie, I interrupted you. Just big piles of all the household goods sitting by the roadside. I'm sorry. What are you guys say? And they just pick it up. Just big, big dump uh, trucks will come yeah. by. And There's several pictures of the kids taking meals. So you can do it quickly. How many students altogether went down? A big bus load, right? Around 40? There was um, 37? 30, about 36 of us, somewhere like 36, 37. All right. I know that every day, while we're finishing looking at the pictures, I know that every day there's chances for you to help somebody. Maybe it's in your classroom. Maybe it's a neighbor. Maybe it's somebody who's hurting. And I just encourage you to look for people who need your help because Jesus wants us to do that. And also because, how does it make you feel? It makes us feel actually amazing. It's just a really good feeling to be able to go out there and help someone, even though you don't feel comfortable doing it. Because some people, you don't really know the person, so you're kind of scared of what they'll think of you. But it's just a good feeling afterwards, after you do it. All right. Thank you, children. I appreciate it very much. Our first song this morning we're going to do with the band uh, is kind of a little bit about what we're, the journey that we go through as Christians. Uh, and the title of the song is The Exodus. And if you remember back when Moses led the children of Israel out of bondage and out of Egypt, uh, I want you to think about that Jesus Christ is now leading us out of bondage so that we can have the freedom to live the kind of lives that we want to live and the freedom to, to spend eternity with Jesus. And so as you hear these, some of you may remember when the Exodus came out, uh, as you listen to the, these tunes that come through here, think about the preparation in your own heart of being prepared to meet Jesus Christ when he comes to take us home. <laughs>
The song that we're going to sing this morning was not originally written as a, a Christian piece, but it, uh, it is very apropos, and the uh, arranger of this particular arrangement did a really nice job putting it together, because we start with a hymn that you're all very familiar with, Be Still My Soul. And then we move to a song that you probably have all heard as well. And that song is called You Raise Me Up. And like I said, it was not written originally as a Christian song. But I'd like to share some things with you from it this morning. Um, when I am down and oh my soul is so weary. When troubles come and my heart burden be. Then I am still and wait here in the silence until you come and sit a while with me. That's what prayer is all about, isn't it, people? When we're in trouble and we're struggling and we need to, the Lord is asking us, he tells us in Psalms, be still and listen. And he wants to come and he wants to sit with us and he wants to be with us. He wants to put his arms around us and comfort us. And he wants to help us through the life that we live here in this world so that we're prepared to live the life with him. And then it goes on. You raise me up so that I can stand on mountains. You raise me up to walk on stormy seas. Do you remember in the scripture somebody walking on the stormy sea? Yeah, Jesus is walking across the stormy sea. And what does he say to Peter? Come on out, walk with me. And as long as Peter kept his eyes on the Lord Jesus, he was able to walk on the stormy seas. The, uh, when I am on your shoulders, I am strong. The young people play this little game when we take them down to the camp in the pool, and they call it chicken. And uh, if you've ever watched them, uh, they have one person in the water, and then the other person gets up on their shoulders, and they have this little push and shove match to see which ones they can knock over in the water. And as I've watched this through the years, and this is nothing new, every group I've ever taught, they all do the same thing when you take them swimming. And I've watched and I noticed that it is not the person on the top that makes the difference. Because if the base is sturdy and sound, the person on top can hang on and stay there. When the base falters, then they fall in the water. Isn't it wonderful that Jesus Christ wants us to be on his shoulders because he will never falter? And we will not fall.
down, oh I am tired, Lord. You gotta slow me down, or oh, will you help me, Lord? Slow me down, oh I am tired, Lord. Slow me down, oh will you help me, Lord? Slow me down, oh I am tired, Lord. Slow me down, oh will you help me, Lord? Slow me down, Lord. Slow me down, or will you help me, Lord? Ain't got time to think and pray. Ain't got time to think and pray. I need to pray before the judgment day. Pray before the judgment day. Time is running out, they say. Time is running out, they say. I gotta slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. Help, Lord, slow me down. Oh, can you hear me, Lord? You gotta slow me down. Slow me down, oh, I am tired, Lord. You gotta slow me down, oh, will you help me, Lord? Slow me down, oh, I am tired, Lord. Slow me down, oh, will you help me, Lord? You gotta slow me down, oh, I am tired, Lord. Slow me down, oh, will you help me, Lord? I said, slow me down, slow me down, Lord. Not ready for the judgment day, can you hear me? You gotta slow me down. Slow me down, oh, I am tired, Lord. Slow me down, oh, will you help me, Lord? Slow me down. looking for some music to do with a men's group that uh, came across this piece. And it was kind of an interesting thing because in the world we live in today, we just, we just seem to be going faster and faster and faster and faster. And we really do need to say, Lord, slow me down so that I can take time to be with you so that I can really do what I need to do. The next song that we're going to have the band uh, play for us this morning is uh, is a suite. It's the uh, it's called the Deep River Suite, and in this suite we uh, we have Swing Low, Sweet Chariot, and we have the Deep River, and Joshua Fit the Battle of Jericho. <laughs>
next song that we're going to play for you is called Lead On, O King Eternal. And if you want to actually kind of go follow along with the words, if you take it, open up your hymnal to that page, I don't have the number. Uh, but this is really a nice arrangement of Lead On, O King Eternal, because that's what we need to do every day, is to ask the Lord Jesus Christ, our King, to lead us on, and lead us right in to the Golden Gates for eternity. Thank you. This time I'm going to have the choir come back up. We were talking about Jesus being our king. We're talking about praying to our king. And we're talking about eternity. And now we're going to sing a song praising him. Because he is majesty.
The next song we'd like to sing for you, and we're going to end with the band today, by the way, okay, uh, is a, a song that I would like you to become involved in. You can sing it with us if you'd like to, but in your own heart, uh, as we sing, I pledge allegiance to the Lamb. We would like you also to re-pledge yourself to the Lamb of God um, as we come near the close of our service today so that, that we make that commitment to let Jesus know how important he is to us and how we want to give ourselves and our lives to him.
as we have pledged allegiance to our Lamb, we can count on one thing. And he has promised that he would be our mighty fortress, that he would protect us, that he would complete the work in us so that we can be ready to go home to meet Jesus. And as we play this last piece, an almighty fortress, I want you to think about the almighty God that you have. And as we go away from this place today, make sure you know that everyone you come in contact needs to know that as well. Because we live in a very precarious world today. Well, we live in times that are very difficult. And in some ways it's tough, but in other ways it's great because when it gets tough is when people start looking for the Savior. And what an awesome time for us to be able to give them the answers they need. <laughs> O oh God of heaven, Jesus, our mighty fortress, thank you for giving us the opportunity today to be with you, to praise you, to honor you, and to lift you up. Thank you, Jesus. I pray, pray for a very special blessing on this church, and this community, and the hospital in this community, as they reach out and touch the lives of men and women who are in need. And I pray, Father, that you would help them to continue to be a bright, shining light here in this area of Manchester. And Father, you know each person's needs here today. You heard the long prayer list that we had earlier and the needs that are there. And I pray, Father, that right now as we are praying that you would reach down and touch each one of these individuals and their families with your loving arms. Bring them comfort, bring them peace, and if possible, because you only know what is best for them, healing. We thank you, Jesus, that you love us. We thank you that you care for us. 
We thank you that you give us a burden in our hearts and a burning passion for the souls of the people we touch each day. And Lord, we pray that we would really literally be able to touch the future, and we know that we can only through, do that through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Bless us, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for the prayers that you're already answering. We love you, Jesus. In your holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm.